Well, hello, and welcome back to the Skating Lesson Presents Olympian 360. I'm Dave Lees, and I'm thrilled to welcome back USA Today columnist, NPR, CNN contributor, ABC News contributor, Christine Brennan. Christine, welcome back to the Skating Lesson. Well, Dave, it's great to be on with you again. It's been a long time, uh, but uh, always enjoy uh, seeing what you're, you're posting on Twitter, et cetera, et cetera, and obviously uh, it's a very tough news in the world of gymnastics, which, of course, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's been ongoing now for, for years, and, and, and certainly the last few months have been a real, real tough time for those uh, wonderful uh, young women who've represented the nation so well and what we've been learning about them, right? Yeah. It's been terrible. Yeah, and when things happen in sports, there's no one I, you know, reach to text for <laughs> before you, Christine. You know, I, it's like an impulse. You know, I can't even control it. I'm sorry. Just stop. <laughs> but, uh, no, that's okay. Text away. And yes, I, I, uh, uh, I mean, it, it would. We obviously cannot joke, of, and no. it's hor the horrors of Larry Nassar, but. There are, there are lots of uh, – I, I, I've always kind of said that the intersection of sports and culture is kind of where I tend to reside right now and where I tend to do a lot of uh, – most of my work. And that intersection is about as wide as the Gulf of Mexico these days, That you know, where, where sports and culture mix, because if it's not Donald Trump, if it's not Nike and Colin Kaepernick, if it's, if it's not um, – uh, domestic abuse uh, from athletes, uh, from baseball to football, um, on and on it goes. Of course, then it's, a, it's the horrors of the Larry Nassar story. So, yeah, um, I text away, but let's. I hope that uh, yeah. sometimes we can just get back to sports. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, in you know, in all seriousness, we. Uh, I woke up to news. It, it happened after I went to bed last night that it broke that former CEO of USA Gymnastics, Steve Penny. Uh, was arrested while he was apparently on vacation in Tennessee, uh, and he was indicted on the, for evidence tampering uh, and the removal of files from the Caroli Ranch in New Waverly, Texas, I believe from Rhonda Fain's, uh Senate subcommittee testimony and subsequent written responses that they were medical files, although they could be more than just medical files. I mean, what, what's your reaction to this, Christine? Well, it's it's. I've known Steve Penny and covered Steve Penny. I knew him when he was back at uh, U.S. Uh, I guess the U.S. or USA Cycling, whatever the, the Cycling Federation, the international or the uh, uh, you know the national governing body for cycling, and then um, and then of course as the uh, head of USA Gymnastics for many years. And um, I always uh, covering Steve with, as a journalist. You cover people. You know, I'm lucky to cover a ton of of people, athletes, and leaders, and whatever, Dave and. Uh, uh, certainly had a, a, a good working relationship with Steve. Uh, we had our moments. I certainly didn't agree with him on everything. I certainly asked him a lot of questions. Uh, but never in my wildest nightmares, and I would say wildest dreams, but it would be nightmares, would I ever have uh, foreseen uh, this turn of events over the last couple of years. And, you know, the story really, well, the story did break, right before the Rio Olympic Games when the Indianapolis Star, which is part of the USA Today Network, uh, broke the first stories about uh, sexual abuse and, and other misconduct within USA Gymnastics or in the sport of gymnastics. And that led to Rachel Zen Hollander and others calling the Indy Star. I had nothing to do with any of this. Uh, at that point, I you know, was just watching from afar as all of this was starting to develop. I don't think any of us, Dave, would have thought uh, the story would lead uh, to all of all of this. Uh, what Steve Penny is alleged to have done is horrible. Uh, I know there could be jail time, according to what I've, I've read and heard about this particular uh, these particular charges and the arrest of, of Steve Penny. Um, it's uh, it, it's mind-boggling to me that all of this happened. Uh, first and foremost, and I, as you and I, I know, agree. And I'm sure all your listeners do as well. First and foremost, the concern and the thoughts and the and the coverage and the uh, our, our every ounce of our uh, reporting and instincts and, and also as human beings uh, should be with, of course, the survivors, uh, the hundreds and hundreds of young women, uh, girls and women who were uh, sexually abused by Larry Nassar, and that this went on for decades, and that of course USA Gymnastics knew and. Uh, with a cover up, cover up with the uh, the law firm that they were involved with, and Steve Penny again, the, the issue of the files and and taking things from the, allegedly taking things from the Crowley Ranch, all of this, uh, how many 
dozens of young women, I've seen the number of John Manley, I think it's at 55, that, who would have not been abused had this come to a halt if Steve Penny and others had done the right thing when, when uh, they did an internal investigation before they even called the authorities. Uh, my goodness, it's, um, it, but the first and foremost thought is always with the survivors and, and the, the amazing heroes like Allie Raisman and, and Jordan Weber and, and Simone Biles and, and all of them. So I, I, I am, well, I'm stunned by the turn of events, although I am not because it looks, the story looks to be leading there and certainly the allegations were there about Steve Penny's behavior. And so here we are. And it is just another dark day in USA Gymnastics, and there, of course, have been many of those uh, as the biggest, uh, the worst um, sex abuse scandal uh, in sports history has occurred um, within USA Gymnastics. And the worst scandal in the history of the U.S. Olympic movement, of course, uh, is this particular story. So uh, it's just that all the way around, and, um, you know, we'll see how it all plays out. But what a stunning turn of events. Certainly, I don't think any of us saw that coming, even though clearly the news was, was out there at this point. Yeah, I think we all remember Steve Penny invoking uh, the Fifth Amendment this summer uh, in front of the Senate. And I, and I remember thinking what would come of that, and yet this was still a surprise. But I guess my question for you, using your journalistic brain here, uh, the good Northwestern University training, what do you imagine is in those files? Um, I, I would imagine uh, we know, uh, at least at Michigan State, that Larry Nassar did document uh, some of his um, supposed, although it's not treatment, but he would videotape uh, what he called treatment uh, mm-hmm. to the athletes. Yeah. Uh, also, do you think it's, it's that in nature would be why they would uh, try allegedly get rid of the files? Or perhaps could they show uh, practices at the ranch where athletes were competing on concussions of serious injuries that would kind of indicate, uh, you know, why USA Gymnastics was so beholden to Nasser. Right, right. Well, I, I think the uh, – our conjecture, which is what it is at this point, I think could pretty much go anywhere. Um, uh, I think you've made some good points, Dave, about the uh, – some of the files from Michigan State – uh, as a, uh, you're very kind to uh, give a shout out to Northwestern and, and Medill School of Journalism, uh, but that, that I learned there that that uh, talk about what I know, and then of course mm-hmm. talk about what I don't know. And and mm-hmm. uh, there's of course, it's, and, and I know you know this that there's just no way to know at this point uh, the depth of uh, the records, uh, what they tell us, how in depth they are, how revealing they are, how horrifying they are. Um, I think the good news, as we can say throughout this story, and there's not much good news in this story, uh, but the good news is we're finding out, mm-hmm. and uh, justice is being served. And uh, we have created in our country, of course, completely unwittingly, and we wish we hadn't, but we have created in our country uh, hundreds of, of wonderful role models and heroes. Uh, we're going to be hearing from these young women, uh, the Allie Race and Simone Biles, uh, uh, Rachel Den Hollanders for for decades. My sense is some of them may well be leading the nation um, in terms of how uh, moving forward in their lives as as leaders, uh, as role models, and as as of course survivors. So uh, on those issues of survival, but also on the issues of leading the nation and paving the way of women, uh, eventually take over the, the country and our leadership of our country slowly but surely. Uh, you know they're not going to find out, and uh, I, I'm anxious to find out, and I think many of us are anxious to find out the depths here. And, you know, the the sadness that I feel, of course, is first and foremost as a journalist for uh, and as a human being for the uh, the survivors, uh, the hundreds of victims of Larry Nassar and these young girls and women, uh, just horrifying. So that, that of course, is, is always the headline. It, that is definitely the um, – you know, where where it starts and pretty much ends for me. But I do feel a sense of sadness at Dave and and just kind of utter astonishment that the leaders of USA Gym- Gymnastics, led by Steve Penny, were so poor at leading. And that that any kind of humanity would have said, when you find these things out, immediately go to the authorities. Uh, any kind of humanity would have said, let's get to the bottom of this right now. Uh, let's drop everything we're doing 
Uh, and if and if you're a leader of a national governing body or anywhere, university, any, anything at all, it was, in life, a school, uh, the church, Catholic church or other churches, wherever you are, and you hear or see something like this, immediately get help. I mean, immediately find people who know what they're doing. All of this was not done, allegedly anyway, by Steve Penny and USA Gymnastics. And that is an incredibly sad thing to say because – if, the, if these leaders had been good leaders and done the things uh, that they should have done and not done the things they are alleged to have done, think of how different, Dave, the story might be. And think of how different. Not, not There would have been still hundreds of, of women who had dealt with Nassar from Michigan State and, and of course, been abused by Nassar, Nassar at Michigan State in the early stages of USA Gymnastics. It wouldn't have stopped everything, but it would have – uh, shown immediately that these leaders could lead and they could have done the right thing. They didn't, uh, at least from all accounts. And that, that is so sad and so troubling on so many levels. And a signal when you have uh, the authorities showing up at Steve Penny's vacation cabin in, in Tennessee and, and taking him off, I'm presuming in handcuffs, taking him away, uh, that should be a lesson. And it, 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 as we know, often – the deterrence and the the lesson is in someone being caught and showing other people how bad it is. Um, one would hope that that would be the wake up call everyone needs if they already haven't had it over the last year or two. Uh, for any uh, one working with children, uh, or knowing children, or being around children, to see that uh, how bad this can go and how much trouble you can get in, rightly so, uh, if you are alleged to do the things that Steve Penny did. Mm-hmm. I wanted to ask you. Um, you uh, mentioned earlier that you've covered Steve Penny for many years, and I think as someone who's watched Olympic sports, I don't know much about cycling, but he became a larger-than-life figure as the CEO of USA Gymnastics. We would see him uh, on several TV broadcasts, obviously announcing the Olympic team uh, in 2016 in kind of a, um, a unique way, I think, compared to other sports. And he, he almost seemed like a king. Obviously, they landed many sponsors under him. Uh, I remember being a young intern uh, in Beijing. I was telling you earlier today that I remember you interviewing Steve Penny while I was doing interning things, and you were asking him about the underage gymnasts from Beijing, and it, it didn't seem like it um, it bothered him that the U.S. had lost to, you know, potentially underage gymnasts. It just seemed, you know, he was a definite businessman uh, there. But I was wondering, what was he, you know, like in cycling? You know, what has he been like, you know, to your knowledge? Yeah, I um, as I said, we had the typical journalist and leader or sports leader relationship, which is to say that we, if we're doing our jobs, we're probably not going to get along. Uh, I because that's uh, frankly like me too much. I get nervous because I, I, I my goal is not to be their friend. Um, although it's fine to have nice relationships, and I certainly have a lot of friends in the Olympic movement, people I've covered. But I also don't consider them. Uh, they understand that this is always going to be a journalist and uh, and, and um, official relationship. So even if we are friendly, uh, that doesn't mean that I would not um, do my job because, of course, that's my total responsibility. I've been doing this for over what 35 years, and there's it's not going to stop now. So it works pretty well. So uh, so yes, I was. Uh, you reminded me actually. I, I kind of forgotten about it 10 years ago. But uh, I do remember, you know, because the story, the underage story, which, in fact, you were working on and were very mm-hmm. helpful to me about how these gymnasts were, I guess they said they were 16. Mm-hmm. Uh, they looked 14, and they were probably 12, mm-hmm. you know, uh, or 10 or something. And, and those birth dates, as I recall, were just disappearing on the website. If you went to a website, this would have been er- earlier in the uh, Internet era. But nonetheless, we went to look at their ages, and all of a sudden the, their bios had disappeared and then they all of a sudden were the right age their birth dates were the right age so there was a lot of shenanigans and obviously just out now cheating by the chinese to win that gold medal and yes i remember speaking um, to steve about it and uh one would have thought that the u.s uh the leader of usa gymnastics would have uh been more concerned about the chinese cheating i will say this that uh, it is often the case within U.S. national governing bodies, Dave, and also U.S. Mm-hmm. Olympic Committee leadership over the years, to make sure to try to not make too many waves. The United States is by far the um, the target of so 
much attention in the Olympics, good and bad. And we can be beloved as a country at the Olympic Games, and we can also be despised. And I know those leaders try to walk a fine line. So I understood, I think, what Steve was doing that day. But my job was to ask him tough questions. And, of course, I would always do that. I would always do that. I would never, ever uh, shy away from that, no matter what uh, the circumstance. Um, but, yes, often I end up uh, interviewing officials uh, in dark corridors and uh, in hallways uh, late after competitions are over, especially in gymnastics or figure skating, where, of course, they are uh, judged sports and you can have a lot of uncertainty as opposed to a sport that's based on time. And uh, I do remember that. But, but Steve and I always, uh, even if he was mad at me and, and angry or whatever, didn't like what I was doing, uh, always, always a good relationship. I mean, always respectful. And that um, and I, I, that's important to say, it has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with what we're talking about here, because obviously this is a matter of, uh, of uh, the authorities and, and uh, a criminal case potentially and allegations that are incredibly troubling among many allegations that are troubling about what uh, Steve Penny did and didn't do as leader of USA Gymnastics. But, but my relationship with him was fine and, uh, and nothing untoward. And, of course, there's no way on earth, I'm sure people might be asking, there's no way, Dave, I would have ever known about anything that might have been happening. I never met Larry Nasser. I don't think I ever laid eyes on Larry Nasser because I would cover gymnastics only at the uh, Olympics, one world championships in Indy that Kim Zemesco, when, when she was in her heyday, and then uh, a couple nationals, Olympic trials, uh, San Jose and other places, Boston, and then a couple um, – other events like uh, mm-hmm. the American Cup or whatever they call that, which was in uh, Northern Virginia for a while. So I guess theoretically I saw Larry Nasser because I, I'm guessing he was on the floor, uh, but I, I did not know him, would never have known him. And believe me, if I had heard anything, I'd gotten a whiff of any any story, any um, tip or anything, uh, I would have dropped what I was doing to work on that story. So I, I wish I I wish I could have gotten a tip. I would have loved to know mm-hmm. something and try to. Uh, try to help and as a journalist to get the news out as quickly as possible. But I no, no idea, uh, and there's no way I could have known because, again, I would just drop in for the big events, and mm-hmm. I hardly knew these athletes. So I, I wish, though, that we all as journalists could have known more. Yeah, um, and, and done something. Yeah, and it, it's such a shame. Um, but I would, you do have a lot of experience with governing bodies, and, and I wanted to get your perspective on this because as, as we transition, there are other things that have been dominating the news, and I think the entire country – and perhaps the world now uh, really has been baffled, you know, by the continued incompetence, uh, insensitivity, and ignorance uh, by the USA Gymnastics leadership. Um, and is it your understanding, uh, you know, in hiring Mary Bono, who represented uh, the the cover up with Larry Nasser, or alleged cover up, and and you know her tweet about Colin Kaepernick and Nike. Are, is USAG, are they ignorant of public perception? Are these government bodies just um, incompetent? I mean, is this unique? Is this a common thread among the NGBs? You know, what's your take on that? Well, uh, this you can't make this up. It would be, if, Dave, if it weren't so horrible and uh, inexplicable and frustrating and awful, it would be hilarious. Uh, but it's of course, it's not hilarious because it's just un- unreal, uh, the mistakes of USA Gymnastics and their board. And, by the way, this is a new board because they got rid of the old board. And uh, so, you know, C. Penny resigned in March of 2017, uh, and I was uh, able to break that story that that was going to happen. There was certainly uh, encouragement, shall we say, from the U.S. Olympic Committee on that. And so he left in March of 2017. So that is, uh, what are we a year and a half, a little bit more than a year and a half after that. So after, of course, took a while. They hire Carrie Perry. She's around for what um, eight nine months, and then get rid of her. She leaves. Uh, just it's just a disaster, a PR disaster in other ways with her. And uh, and then that was six weeks ago. And then of course they announced on a, on Friday uh, a week ago uh, that they were going to they were bringing in Mary Bono, and that was Friday. And by Tuesday she was gone. And I, it's, as I said, it's, it's, I, I don't know if I've ever seen anything quite like this, this incompetence, uh, this chaos. It's just uh, it's appalling. It's absolutely appalling because they should be in service, of course. To their, their whole job and their whole mission is to be uh, helping athletes uh, compete and be safe and the well-being of these athletes and having great experiences while they're representing the country or they're working towards that goal so that they then move on and become 
um, wonderful people and wonderful leaders in this country. Um, so at, at every level, that's failure. And I, uh, you know, I was actually off last weekend. I was at homecoming at Northwestern. And I started seeing all this, uh, this stuff on Twitter, Dave, about Mary Bono. Um, and then, of course, saw the Simone Biles tweet about Mary Bono's tweet about blacking in and, and coloring in the Nike swoosh on her golf shoes. And, of course, that was – and then, you know, that, of course, is a terrible, the idea of wanting to silence an athlete. Whatever you think about Colin Kaepernick mm-hmm. and Nike, the fact is you're talking about athletes' rights and athletes speaking out, and especially we want that in USA Gymnastics after the sex abuse scandal. And if it's still – you know, obviously, who knows if it's still – if there's still athletes being abused, we want to hear from them. And then this is that person. And then, of course, her connection. She's uh, – to be fair to Mary Bono, she is – uh, it was a principal at the law firm, uh, the Washington office dealing with legislative affairs is what we understand, the law firm that helped USA Gymnastics concoct the story and, and hide from parents and gymnasts why Larry Nassar was not at events. Uh, and obviously that led then to others, other horrible uh, turn of events, led to other uh, gymnasts and young, young women being abused by Larry Nassar because uh, the law firm helped cover it up. And even though Mary Bono says, and I believe her, that she had absolutely nothing to do with uh, that horrible cover-up uh, by USA Gymnastics, if you just cannot have anyone who's associated with that law firm in any way, shape, or form be brought in as interim CEO or as the full-time CEO. You just can't. This issue is way too big and too important, and USA Gymnastics knew that, and their board should have known that. And it's just, uh, it's just inexplicable that, uh, uh, and on, on, you know, just uh, uh, beyond uh, unacceptable. I'm, lo- I'm looking for words. You know, I'm having trouble finding words. Dave, as you can tell, yeah. I'm running out of running out of uh, adjectives. That's uh, I think I need a thesaurus. But yeah. um, and I'm not making fun, of course, of it. But that, that they would end up having someone who has ties to that law firm. You just can't make that mistake, and that's horrible. Now, they do have a, 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 an executive search firm now, not for that, not for Mary Bono, but for this, for this latest one, and so for the new search now. And so that, let's hope that they're professionals and they will make sure that this kind of nonsense doesn't happen again. Well, I was listening to an interview with Chelsea Memel where she said that they employed search firms uh, for, you know, finding Carrie Perry. And I'm not sure about Mary Bono. You know, we don't know yet. But one thing, uh, the optics are baffling. But one thing that I, I wanted to um, ask you about is in the middle of this, Simone Biles has emerged as a real outspoken role model for, you know, empowered athletes, women, leaders, young girls, um, however, you know, you want to label it. And, and she's on her way to compete at the, at the World Gymnastics Championships in Doha. Uh, she is prepared to unveil a new vault that's never been done before. She's looking as strong as ever. How compelled are you by Simone and her team, uh, you know, and her teammates who, you know, are about to compete, you know, for a world championship in the middle of all? Uh, yeah. Oh, exactly, Dave. It's a great question. I'm glad you asked it because how impressive is Simone Biles and, and these other athletes, but especially Simone because she's certainly take, taken on this role as the conscience of her national governing body. The adults wouldn't do it, and so she did it. Simone Biles is the conscience of USA Gymnastics, speaking out as she has, doing what she has done, and, uh, and forcing change again, uh, continuing to speak out. I mean, she was the one, as, as I recall, who pointed out that Carrie Perry had not yet closed the, um, uh, the, the Corolli Ranch. And, you know, Simone has just been a remarkable and a, and a hero. We throw those terms around, hero, courage, et cetera. We throw those around a lot, but uh, without a doubt, a hero in every way. This, that word is, is, a, is the perfect word for Simone Biles, Dave. And, uh, and while all this is going on, her, you want to have, of course, at this point in, in your career, any point, as, a, as an elite athlete at the highest level, uh, one of the greatest Olympians of all time and one of the U.S. stars going into from Rio in 2016, presumably also going to Tokyo in 2020, uh, you want to have a singular focus. And there's no way, of course, that you can have a singular focus if you're also saving your NGB from itself. And that's exactly what Simone Biles has done. Unbelievable. I mean, I have thought the world of her uh, as an athlete. I've always just just thought she's so remarkable and so worthy of our uh, of praise and 
and just the adulation of her fans and, and, the, and the nation that's cheering for her at the Olympics of the world. But you throw this in, and wow, this is a remarkable young person. And um, again, the conscience of the Federation while she's also trying to win another world title. Uh, remarkable uh, and just uh, an amazing uh, story, uh, amazing profile and courage. And in this world of ours, uh, with politics and everything else, we're not seeing a lot of that these days. But we're sure seeing it from uh, the athletes in USA Gymnastics, led, of course, by Simone Biles. Now, I would be remiss if I didn't bring up that you have you know, numerous contacts in the U.S. Olympic Committee. What are you hearing? How real is uh, the, the prospect of decertification? Uh, you know what? I have not heard anything uh, uh, that I could report uh, and even – uh, rumblings at this point. I think um, I think that uh, it sounds like they're going to let the search firm do what it's doing, and because there wasn't a search firm involved apparently in the Mary Bono decision, uh, I, it sounds like they're chalking that one up to uh, whatever, and I, maybe we'll find out how that happened. But uh, in the meantime, it looks like that they're still moving ahead as a as a national governing body, and they're looking uh, now to hire a permanent. CEO. So that's all I'm hearing, and uh, that's all we've got at this point. Obviously, we'll see how it all plays out. But um, it, it is, it's unbelievable. It's absolutely unbelievable. Yeah. And to think, Dave, that this is the group of people, I mean, it's the gang that can't shoot straight. Yeah. And any, anything you say that sounds funny, I don't even mean it to be that way because, again, uh, the, the, the absolute horrors and disgust about what happened with uh, just all of those wonderful athletes, those wonderful young women, uh, because of Larry Nassar, what he did to them. But it really is just, uh, um, you know, I'm incredulous. I've never seen anything quite like this. I've gone to the Olympics since the 80s, and I've never seen this kind of chaos, this kind of uh, incompetence um, in the leadership of a national governing body. And, I, and believe me, we've seen some bad things over the years. Nothing even approaches this because, again, not only is the incompetence so breathtaking, but also because the issue is just so important and so heartbreaking. Yeah, and, and to hopefully end things on a little bit of a lighter note, uh, you mentioned the gang that, you know, can't shoot straight. Now, I seem to remember you referring to um, Tanya's bag of uh, goons <laughs> as that um, in 1994. And last week, the USFS uh, marketing <laughs> campaign came out uh, for Detroit Nationals saying history repeats itself, which after I, Tanya, was curious. Have you seen that uh, video? I, I I did see it. I saw it on social media. You may have been one of the people that put it out there. And uh, unbelievable. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm sure most of your people listening to us uh, know the history of this. But, of course, it was uh, January 6, 1994, when uh, Nancy Kerrigan was attacked. Not funny at all uh, until we, thankfully, Nancy recovered and uh, went on to the performance of her life and should have won the gold medal, I believe. But whatever, had the greatest performance of her life. So she moved on and was able to recover in a, in a very um, courageous way herself and then uh, and competed in Lillehammer. But Tanya and that group of knuckleheads and clowns, uh, that is, I think, worthy of our scorn and, and laughs. And in some ways, because, again, Nancy is fine and was fine at the, at not long after. And, and But what a horrible thing if they had tried to kill her is what they were thinking of doing. So all this was going on in Detroit at the, the National Championships in 94, which were also the Olympic trials. And Tanya was allowed to compete and went, won the national title. It was later stripped away because of her uh, involvement in the attack on Nancy and helping those guys and uh, hindering the prosecution. And, of course, she's, you know, a lot of the things she said indicate that she knew a lot. So all the national, uh, you know, the U.S. National Figure Skating Championships Day that have occurred since then, and not once have they been back in Detroit, mm -hmm. uh, which – which, of course, is, is also fine. I mean, that's, you know, no big deal. And so they're finally coming back to Detroit. <laughs> and, uh, and yes, that is their team, their, their, uh, their campaign, their theme. History repeats itself. God almighty, I don't know what that means. But uh, I don't think it means Michelle Kwan is going to emerge as a great star again. Uh, I don't think we're going to see, uh, what, Todd Eldridge and uh, – and, Brian Boitano uh, Brian, and Brian Boitano and Scott Davis. Uh, we hope we will see Brian Boitano, but uh, in the stands. And so, yeah, I, I, I don't even know. I, I, yes, I, in the midst of this busy world, I haven't really focused on it, other than just, just once again being incredulous. Hardly on the uh, level of the USA Gymnastics, a very serious story there. But, yeah. but this is 
Yeah, crazy. So I'll anxiously await what history is going to repeat itself. Um, but uh, but I'm sure I'm sure we'll find out. <laughs> well, I look forward to seeing you there when history uh, may or may not repeat, repeat itself. So thank you so much for coming on the skating lesson, Christy. Dave, always my pleasure. Thank you so much. Take care.